Hello, folks. How you doing? This is Glenn Glassville with the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show, where we talk about real life real estate situations, but we bring you real life real estate solutions. And I think I told you already, but I'm your host, Glenn Glassville, affectionately known as Mr. Doll Out of a Dime. And today, our guest is coming back again, Encore Presentation, uh, to share with us some of the amazing things that are happening with the software that's called PropStream and how he's going to help us learn how to use it to pull leads, absentee owners, you know, all sorts of things. So, um, you know, hang out with us. Thank you for hanging out with us for today. Uh, and we're going to get you some great information on how to use the software and some of the amazing, amazing benefits to using it. So I'm going to bring on our guest. Uh, let's see, we have him here. Mr. Burton, how you doing today? I am doing extremely well. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today? Great, great, great. Glad you could get back in with us today. Um, and, you know, as I was sharing with the folks, you know, talking about some of the amazing things that are going to, you're going to be sharing with us in the PropStream software. So before we get into that, I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to the folks and kind of tell them, give them a little bit of information about what you're going to be sharing with us today. Absolutely. So um, what I'll be sharing today is an amazing real estate tool. I It's called PropStream. Um, for those that don't know, PropStream has actually been around since 2006. I've uh, been collecting data, started with foreclosure. That was the thing back then. And then over time, I uh, started just building that data set, right? Bringing in MLS, vacant, high equity, mortgage information, tax information. And so here we are today, 15 years later, where we have this product where you can literally dive into it and pull a market anywhere throughout this United States uh, and build your own motivated sellers or buyers lists, get their contact information, market to them directly on the same platform. And then when these leads do contact you to potentially want to sell their homes, PropStream can also be utilized to essentially analyze that property. Uh, we try to give you as much information as possible so you can make the best and most informed decision. This also includes running comps on properties that are calling me back. Uh, and these comps can uh, utilize both public and MLS records. And that's a key component there is not only are we here to help you build a list, a lead generation platform, but it's also a platform you're going to be utilizing to run comps and analyze properties again to make the best, most informed decision. Where I come along was seven years ago, um, started out as a customer service representative, uh, just kind of understanding both sides of the spectrum from you know the data world to the investing world. And over the years, I've positioned myself to be essentially the tour guide of PropStream. So as the company is releasing new components, new tools, I'm here to kind of educate the audience, the investors on how, why we're doing what we're doing here at PropStream and vice versa. Sometimes we'll get suggestions um, we'll get certain things that are you know needed uh, from the investor side that i'll bring up to the company leaders and then we're able to come come up with some sort of synergy and we like to say that this product is investor built for investors so that's a little bit about prop stream a little bit about me today and today we will be going over prop stream uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what it can do for your business okay great stuff great stuff so tell us tell us a little bit about yourself uh where you're from and how did you get into the uh prop stream tech world i guess i'll call it <laughs> well i'm originally from the philippines and i moved down here when i was about two years old and i grew up in la county and um just pretty much been an la kid for my whole life now uh, I grew up in the 90s, so obviously what ended up, uh, what I ended up getting exposed to was a wave of technology from video game consoles to uh, computers. And ever since then, computers, technology has been part of our era, my generation's lifestyle. Um, so I embraced it at a very young age and uh, very, it became very computer literate. Um, I just understood hardware, software. And so seven years ago, uh, after uh, walking away from a retail job at um, a video game location, I decided to get involved into the technology world a little bit more. And so I saw an ad for PropStream. I didn't know anything about real estate at that mm -hmm. time. Um, figured I'd answer it. Uh, they obviously did their background checks, their interviews, and they thought I was a perfect fit. Um, and at first it was good. I mean, all I did was just kind of help people install the product, uh, make sure it was up and running. Uh, but over time, people would ask me questions like, hey, you know, what would you think I should do here? And 
again, I'm not an expert at investing, but I decided if people are going to start asking me questions, why don't I just kind of understand where they're coming from? So I took it upon myself to take real estate courses, uh, educate myself through multiple books on creative seller financing and uh, what agents do and what lenders look for. And so again, I'm not an, an, an investor. I'm not someone who you can go to for advice, but I do understand what you need. And so I'm able to essentially bridge the gap between company and the user as well. And so that's a little bit about me. And uh, again, for seven years, I've just been here helping uh, people understand how to effectively pro use PropTrain for their real estate business. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, and you know, like I, t I shared with you just a little bit ago, I've, I've gone in and I've, you know, tinkered with it a little. Um, I have some people on my team that are much more advanced at using it than I am. Um, but I wanna give an opportunity for you to share with the folks some of the benefits, uh, how they can use it, and uh, and and why they should use it, you know. And I and I know you share quite a bit of that, you know. But some people will probably want a little more detail, you know. And that's I guess where I would, you know, come in and ask the questions, a little more detail about how this pro this um, program can work to help those of us that are investors. So uh, you mentioned that you can actually market to people right inside the platform. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? That's correct. So on top of creating a motivated sellers list or buyers list, our system has an internal skip tracing platform. So you can actually yeah. take that list once you've built that motivated sellers or buyers list and skip trace it. And so within about five to 15 minutes or, or longer, depending on how big your list may be, um, you'll get contact information, landlines, cell phones, and email. So that alone uh, once you get that information, you yourself can, you know, manually cold call, manually send postcards. But within our system as well, we have a, an area called the campaign page. And what that allows you to do is take that list of motivated sellers and buyers with their contact information and then send direct postcards, ringless voicemails or emails through PropStream. Wow. Wow. Right inside the platform. That's that's amazing. And, you know, that that combines as I, you know, as I'm thinking off the top of my head, that combines about three or four different programs that many of us use uh, for different those different things. So, you know, having it all in one location is, is actually a great, great thing to do. Um, so how is it that we locate? So can we do, a, for, exa for example, a detailed search? of you know down to the zip code and county of properties that we're specifically looking for that's uh, correct um mm -hmm. our system has four types of marketing searches you can perform uh, you can search by county you can search by a city you can search by zip code or up to five zip codes if you like mm. you can also use our draw search feature which allows you to pretty much custom create an area with any zip code uh, that you'd like to essentially get results in. So those are the four types of searches that you can perform. Uh, after performing those searches, we'll give you the results that we've collected. And at that time, it's either, uh, it's up to you at that point to uh, essentially filter for the particular one you're looking for. Got it, got it. And are, are we able to search for, you know, many of us, you know, our primary objective is to reach uh, absentee owners. Uh, is there a way that we could do that within that platform as well? That's correct. Through our filtering system, you'll have over 150 different filtering options. And what you're referring to is the owner occupancy status. Yes. Uh, what that allows you to do is either say, yes, you want an owner occupied property or a non owner occupied property or what many would consider an absentee owned property. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't just end there. Um, that's just one filter of many uh, things that you can do are, for example, a non owner occupied property, absentee owned property with a tax lien or with a bankruptcy or a pre foreclosure. So there are other things that you can do other than isolate just one particular uh, pain point. So we could be specific about not only, like you said, not only if it's absentee owner, but also the ability to be able to find out if there's a tax lien or mortgage or something like that on it as well. That's correct. So again, for our database is probably the, one of the largest out there when it comes to property information. And so, yeah, not only are you able to isolate, you know, property records, such as whether the owner's register is occupying or not occupying, but we do collect records such as pre foreclosures and auctions and divorces and bankruptcies. We have MLS. 
So you can take these other list types that we have and put them together, essentially what others, what some people would consider list stacking. Mm -hmm. So we can do a non-owner occupied property that recently failed on the market and is currently facing a tax lien as we speak. So our system allows you to stack multiple pain points so that way you are really isolating a very motivated lead. Wow, wow. So now you said over 150 filters. Is, is one of them by chance uh, probate leads? Not at the moment. So probate leads is one of the hardest leads to get out there, but to essentially work around that because of the fact that we are a nation provider and just getting data nationwide isn't so easy. So while we're working on that part, what we decided to create was a feature called List Automator. Mm. And so at the end of the day, we as a company understand that we may not have all the data out there and, and that's a reality. And mm. so what List Automator was designed to do was to give you what we have. So mm. for example, if we do not have probate, but the user or the investor is able to acquire a probate list, typically a probate list is just going to consist of an address and the trustee of that uh, situation. Mm -hmm. So what you can do with that list is through our list automator features, you can take that list and import it into PropStream. And what we will do is append the data that we have on those addresses. Wow. So when you take your 100 probates with just addresses and bring it on over to PropStream through our list automator feature, we will now code it with all of our data, the owner's name, mailing address, transaction history, mortgage information, and we will also isolate any of the listing types that they may be in. So at that point, you'll also be able to see how many of those probates are on market, just sold, have a lien, have a bankruptcy. So we don't have probates, but uh, definitely want to bring it on over so we can at least give you our information on top of it. And you can make, again, the best, most informed decision or essentially get rid of the leads that are maybe on market and that you have to wait a little bit longer for or something like that. Got it. Got it. Okay. So um, it, it's like it's like we, we, we find the address and you give us everything else to it, right? <laughs> That's correct. And, and, and that is something, again, that I think a lot of uh, users don't understand that when it comes to data collection, there's a misconception that companies like us are somehow directly connected to the data. At the moment, a, a record is recorded that it should instantly pop up onto these you know, services out there. And that's not the case. Uh, some of these counties are either electronic on paper form or even on, on film reels. So there is a logistic system of getting the data. And so we understand that in some areas, the logistics isn't costly enough for us to send someone every single day just to get one or two records that are being recorded every day, right? So what ends up happening is they may wait maybe every other day or at the end of the week to collect that data. And so discovering this, we realize that there are investors out there that are literally going to the courthouse every day or going to the county's office every day to collect records every morning. Mm. Yet when they do that, the issue with these records is they only give you an address in the current situation. So if I go to the county's office today to get a pre foreclosure list that no provider or no website has at the moment, I still need to analyze those properties. So when I get that pre foreclosure list, do they have mortgages? Which ones are on market? Mm -hmm. which ones have been flagged as vacant, um, any of that instances, right? So mm -hmm. just grabbing a list before anybody else is a, is a good thing, but there's still information that's missing before you go out and start marketing to them or making phone calls. And so that's why we created List Automator is for that very instance. If we don't have a certain list type or we're not able to get it as fast as you are, don't worry. We still have information that can be very, very Im important, such as, again, owner's info, any other encumbrances. So you may have gotten the pre-foreclosure today before we did, but you may not have gotten that tax lien that was recorded on that address a month ago, but we mm. have it, right? And so now we're essentially consolidating the records together so you can make that best informed decision. And that's really why we did it. It was more, to, again, at the end of the day, we understood that the user, the investor, needs to have as much information as possible. And if that means allowing them to bring their outside list on over so we can coat our data on top of it, then so be it. That's what we're going to do. Great stuff. Great stuff. So 
you know, it sounds like, you know, and, and like I said, this is something that I know many investors, you know, those there, there might be some, I'm sure there's pl plenty of people that are aware of the software, but there might be some that not are, are not familiar with it. Um, and, and just to know that there's a way that you can integrate other lists. Like, for example, if we pull the list, you know, some of my, you know, students will pull a list from someplace else or that they had maybe for driving for dollars or things like that. And if they upload that list into PropStream, they can skip trace and everything right from that platform. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. So with List Automator, you'll be able to import and get our data. You'll be able to skip trace that once it's imported and you'll be able to directly market to it. And I do also want to add that the list automator feature, although a lot are using it for bringing in an outside list uh, from a different provider, this is also a perfect opportunity for you to go through your old list. There's a lot of investors that have purchased a list six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, that I know are sitting on your desktop in a folder. You don't want to delete it because you spent some money on it. Right. So <laughs> this would be a great opportunity to take these old lists and bring it on over with List Automator so we can give you this morning's information. So you may have bought a high equity list two years ago and you're thinking, there's probably a lot of properties with you know no more equity in there, or they're probably sold. But when you take that high equity list from two years ago and you bring it on in, we'll tell you which ones still have high equity this morning, which ones are still owned by the same owner and so forth. Wow, and you and you specified this morning. So that information that would be if we enter if we uploaded that list, would that information be real time? And no, not necessarily real time. And when I say about this morning is every day we do an update. So okay. every if if we get a deed and it's been recorded and let's say we, we populate it this morning, when you okay. take your list from two years ago and you bring it in today, you're gonna get that information. You're gonna see that there was a deed recorded just recently and that that property is now sold or no longer a possible lead. So what we can do is, again, take an old list and just give you all the new information that we've collected since you bought that list. And now you can say, okay, 50% of this list gotta go, but the other 50% are still within my high equity criteria. Great, great stuff, great stuff. So now, and I know you're able to, because it, it sounds like you're able to find out about, about tax liens and mortgages and all those other things. How about any other outstanding liens, like maybe mechanics liens or HOA liens or anything like that? Does that information we have, as well? We do have quite a bit of informal, uh, involuntary liens available. So the the type of records that you can pour, or pull, the type of liens that you can pull are, tax liens, which include federal, state, and county tax liens or property tax liens. Mm -hmm. We have HOA, utility mechanical, solar panel, child support liens, and wow. abstracts of judgments as well. Essentially someone uh, being sued and there's a lien on the property until the court decides otherwise. Wow. Wow. Okay. And that's great stuff. That's, I mean, in essence, you know, almost as if it's, if it's actually pulling the title search on the property, you know, which many of us need to know before we go and approach these properties, what type of liens are still, you know, outstanding. That's um, correct. Uh, we, we, again, we try to give as much information. I wouldn't go out and say that, you know, we're, we're going to go ahead and replace a title company, but um, no. no, we do give a lot of information to where you can feel confident enough to make an offer confident enough that, you know, the situation that's unfolding before you can, you know, before you make contact with that seller, um, but at the same time, you know, just being able to have that information in front of you and not go in there blindly, that was really our main goal. Okay, great, great stuff, great stuff. Okay, now I, I want to get into, and I know, of course, obviously you can't name all of the filters, um, you know, with there being 150 of them. Um, what would one that would stand out to you in your mind that you would think that we we could use maybe one or two that we could use that we're probably not um that's that's probably not used you know regularly by investors is it is there one or two that you could tell us about yeah i would say the one that a lot uh, a lot of investors are probably overlooking is the owner's location so in our filter mm -hmm. in our ownership info uh section of our filter there is a possibility that you can isolate where the owner is registered at living or, or the location of the owner. So mm -hmm. we talked about absentee owner. So with that, I can say not only do I want an absentee owner, but I want that owner in a different state. And mm -hmm. so that 
for me, it would, I would assume it would increase that motivation, especially with what's going on right now. Traveling is at an all-time low, Absolutely. and so a homeowner who's in a different state facing a lien or facing a pre-foreclosure is probably a little bit more stressed than if he were to travel to that property with no problems. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing that's overlooked is you know controlling the location of the owner. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, is and, and this is really not the second filter, it's kind of just an overall understanding of our filters. I have this philosophy that a lead is not a list. And so although we have 14 different lists for you can choose from, 12 of them being motivated lists that you can build from, motivated sellers lists that you can build from, the reality is we gave you all these filters so you can go into Profstream and craft your own problem. And I think that's what is missed nowadays is that we get so tunnel vision to just find a list. And this list is a, a pre-foreclosure or a tax mm -hmm. lien. Our system was designed to build a problem. So what you can do is you can say things like, I want a absentee owned property with an out of state owner who just so happens to have three mortgages on that property. Mm -hmm. and there's still 50 percent in equity so that wouldn't even be a list that you're choosing from it's not a pre-foreclosure it's not it's just a person who lives in a different state and this property they have has three mortgages that they have to worry about that can mm -hmm. potentially be a problem especially if these mortgages may have like adjustable rates and so forth right so mm -hmm. i think just when you look at the filter just looking at it in a reverse engineering perspective where okay i'm here i've searched the city i've searched a market now I got to go build a problem. And I think if you approach our filtering system that way, you're going to find yourself some really great leads. Good stuff. Good stuff. I mean, and it's, it's interesting that you, you pointed out that way that we can go and find problems because, you know, those of us that I'll say it this way, those of us that know what we're doing, uh, understand that we are here to help solve those problems and to be able to craft the problems like you suggested, you know, is, is a great way to find the best leads. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. So and, you know, in and of it, you know, with being able to have the different ways to create those problems. I mean, there's several different types of leads we can pull from there. For example, you know, even looking at the possibility of looking at properties that don't have as much equity uh, where we could potentially create a subject to list uh, where we could buy property subject to, you know, would be a great way to, uh, you know, I guess kind of filter some of those lists, you know, to, to search out those properties where we could, you know, come in and look at someone who's, you know, I mean, even even if you, you know, like like you were saying, you know, they're probably in pre-foreclosure, even if they don't have as much equity, that's still an opp opportunity to help with that certain situation where we can take over payments and things like that, you know, so it's, it, you know, that's another great way. I mean, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. The, the other no, way. you nailed it right on the head, Glenn. And that was really what we've kind of designed PropStream to be over the last several years was to be a platform for anybody that needs real estate data to get okay. through, to get. And, and over the seven years I've worked with PropStream, I've come across all types of individuals that need real estate data from, you know, um, investors like yourself that fix and flip, do creative seller strategies, uh, wholesale, to agents looking for off-market properties and buyers to, you know, build their buyers list. We've had lenders use our product. We've had contractors look uh, use our product. And so, yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, understanding that we are, you know, uh, investors are looking for problems and to use our system to, you know, build that problem. That's, I think, what's missing the most. And there's a lot, like you said, with subject twos. I mean, I can think of many things from, you know, what you mentioned, have people with low equity. Uh, there are maybe properties that failed on the MLS. They mm -hmm. want to sell. I just couldn't sell at a certain price. You can go in there and maybe craft a strategy for them that they'd be happy with. So again, the idea is we don't know your in particular strategy. Mm -hmm. So here are over 150 different filters for you to kind of redesign the data that you're pulling from an area to fit your investment criteria. Great, great stuff. Great stuff. Now let's talk about let's talk about uh, building a buyer's list using uh, PropStream. Um, what would some of the be the, some of the ways be that we could use prop streams to create a buyer's list? Well, I would say that there are three ways to do it. The first way would be to use our cash buyers list. So we have a cash buyers list, and we've already done the hard work for you. Um, the cash buyers list is showing all properties that are already non-owner occupied and bought in cash. So we've 
again, gone through all the records and removed all the owner occupied cash buyers. We figured those are just personal purchases, probably not the real investors. So anytime you search a market and you click on a cash buyers, every one of those results are already non owner occupied cash buyers. Mm -hmm. Just some things you probably want to do there is uh, specify when they bought the property, maybe in the last six months, last year, uh, specify the type of buyer. Was it an individual or corporate buyer? And perhaps the characteristics. Um, obviously, you want to make sure if you're looking for a duplex buyer, then you're isolating the buyers that are buying duplexes. So that's the first route using our cash buyers. The second one would probably be to manually build your own buyers list. So and with our filtering system, you have the ability to isolate last sale dates. So you can say, I want a non owner occupied property, owners on a different state, and the property was bought in the last six months. Mm -hmm. Right. So that right there is just crafting your own type of buyer using our filters and just understanding the, be higher, the buyer's behavior. And the last, which is a fairly new uh, list that we built, it's called the flippers list. Mm -hmm. And because we have the MLS data nationwide um, and, and most of the states out there, uh, what we're able to do is utilize both of the data sets, county and MLS records, and we combine them together. So our flippers list is going to show you any property that's been owned for less than 24 months mm -hmm. and is now back on the market for sale. So we figured that this is a behavior that an investor who's fixing and flipping is going to utilize. And so you need to know who that person is as well as the agent representing that individual. So I can search a market, click on the flippers and it's going to populate every single property that's going through that behavior of being owned for less than two years and is back on the market. Wow. Wow. That's, and that, that's basically, that's a flipper's behavior. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great stuff. That's great stuff. Um, and, and now of course, even do, during that point, you know, with having the connection to MLS, so you'd be able to look at what they purchased it for and then get an idea of what they listed it for, um, to get a, you know, some, some of what the general, general you know, ways that they would be looking at selling it. Bingo. And we also have MLS photos. So you'll also be able to see the rehab after it's been listed. Wow. Um, and most importantly, the agent's information is also available in our MLS details. So mm -hmm. you might come across a, a corporate flipper. For example, you see an LLC that's flipping. Mm -hmm. You're not able to skip trace it. Uh, you're, you know, you try to call the 800 number, you keep getting across the clerk or you keep getting a, a, a voicemail line that you need to leave a message. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the agent's information. I'm sure the agent may be able to get you contact to right. who makes the decisions at that LLC. Or maybe you build the relationship with that uh, agent because that agent probably knows four other buyers as well. Mm -hmm. So not only is that agent going to give you maybe the direct contact to the LLC that you just you know witnessed buying and selling the property, but that agent may also have four or five other buyers in that same area that they represent for you. So I think just understanding it from like multiple standpoints, not only, you know, seeing what they bought it for, seeing what they're flipping it for now, uh, but looking at the photos to see the type of rehab that they do, but getting just the, the contact information of everybody involved uh, from the agents to the brokerage, I think that's also very, very important. Great stuff, great stuff. Uh, someone asked a question, which is a great question. They asked the question of, does it integrate with Podio? No, we don't directly integrate with any um, CRMs currently. So you can export our data though. So once you've built your motivated sellers list and perhaps skip traced it, got their contact information, and you can export our information. You can put it on a CSV file and I assume Podio allows you to import our data into their platform. Yes, yes it does. It will, it will allow it that way. Uh, great stuff. I mean that that's even that's even better, you know, because now there there because I use a my dialer integrates with Podio, so a lot of the information that I would use in the dialer that I use would integrate directly. So, for example, if I had the list and I skip traced it, and it was in my dialer, that dialer integrates that information, I guess, via third party into Podio. So that way it will, it will work. I, see. I I believe it worked out. Yeah, there there is what we call direct API connection, where literally within the platform. So within PropStream, you build your list, you do a certain button or click a certain feature, and it automatically sends it on over to Podio without you doing any extra steps. Those are direct API integrations. We don't do that because mm -hmm. we have a lot of data, and obviously there's some legalities with that. 
Um, so what we allow you to do is you're the user. This is your subscription. You paid for it. So if you want to build the list and export the list and take it to a third party platform, you can go ahead and do that. But as a, us as a company, uh, we don't directly connect to the platforms because of just the way that our company structured with the data. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So let's let's do this. Let's do this. Um, and I know you you have several different. Um, I know I've seen some of the YouTube videos that you've done with some of the examples. Um, do you mind kind of sharing with us how you know sharing your screen with us and show us how we can go through and maybe build a list using some sure. of the filters? Yeah. Let, let me go ahead that. and get my screen over to you here. Yeah. do to make your life a little bit easier is we take these leads and we've categorized them for you. So of those 400,000 records, 5,400 of them are on the MLS. And so now I can see just the MLS listed properties, their photos, the description. So anytime I click on one of these uh, properties, this is what I see. Property information, uh, pictures, I can see MLS details see who the agent is, listing history. I can run comps on that property using public records, MLS records, or both. So not again, two part system, one to build a list. The other part is just the amount of details we give you on an address so you can make the best, most informed decision possible. So besides the details, I've searched a market. Now I get to decide which category I'm looking to build. And so even if I chose pre foreclosures, you know, 372 is quite a lot. You know, I mean, if I'm calling, if I'm sending postcard, that might be a little too pricey for my budget. So this is why we created that filter. And the filter here is what allows you to create a problem. And so some problems are obvious and some aren't. And so if we're referring to an obvious problem, we can click our quick list choices and we can look at things that are, you know, on market for a certain amount of time through our filtering system vacant, liens, all the way down to failed listings. So there are several obvious issues that we can look for, like a pre-foreclosure here. And again, we can stop there and just deal with the 372, but if it's still too much, the left-hand side allows you to essentially build even more motivation. So what type of pre-foreclosure? Is it an owner-occupied or is it an absentee-owned one, which we were talking about earlier? Now, other than knowing whether the owner is occupying it or not occupying it, is the occupancy status. So we do collect records from the Postal Service, and we can tell you whether the address has been answering the mail or not answering their mail. So think about this, a non-owner occupied property that is not addressing the mail. So it's probably completely abandoned versus a non-owner occupied property that currently is occupied by a tenant, perhaps. Uh, think of an embarrassing situation where 119 uh, pre foreclosures have to now let their tenants know that they have to pretty much move out pretty soon, right? So, just dealing with these two is very powerful whether it's the owner living there or not living there, whether there's someone there or someone not answering their mail. So, let's do non owner occupied with a tenant. Next, we have property characteristics. So, here you can see that we have commercial buildings, residential, townhouses. So in our property characteristics, we can isolate whether we want commercial pre foreclosures or residential pre foreclosures or vacant land that's in pre foreclosure. So in this case, we'll just keep it simple residential and, you know, we don't want these townhouses or condominiums. So I need to go to property type and choose, you know, whether I do want condominiums or I do want townhouses or I just want single family properties. Okay. 
We have bedrooms, bathrooms, building size, lot size, year built, home features, a bunch of unit ranges. So you got to think of these as problem builders because here, again, a lot probably don't look for year built, but think of it this way. If, if you're negotiating with a homeowner, you know, what if their property was 30 years or older? Well, now you're for sure going to be able to offer them a lower price because that property definitely needs some rehab, right? Or maybe you're an investor that, you know, you, you don't want to rehab. You just want to buy something that's distressed and, you know, get it at a good price and then list, maybe clean it up and then list it right away. So in that case, why don't you look for a property that was built maybe in the last 10 years or later? So there are features here that sometimes are overlooked, but can drive motivation, whether the property's old or very new and there's less work that needs to be done. You've got home features. And for those looking for multifamily properties, the unit number range. You can also include and exclude HOA uh, properties as well. So that's our property characteristics. And then now it's the MLS stats. So we can apply whether these pre foreclosures are on or off market. Maybe they're off market because they recently failed on the market. And so now we're down to five very highly motivated pre foreclosures. We went from 372 to five pre foreclosures that have also failed on the market. So what I just did was create two problems, owners in pre foreclosure, it failed on the market, and the owner is not occupy the property and is a tenant uh, currently res residing in that property. All right, so get creative, it could be a failed listing that's not on the market anymore, maybe it's on market, it's currently active, but it's been active for more than 90 days. So there are just several approaches that you could take. Understand that it's not just a list that you're looking for. It's a problem that you're trying to build. And here are just some examples of those problems that you can build. Okay. So again, keeping it simple, pre foreclosures that are not on market, but do understand that you can use our MLS status section to create more than just an off market property. You also have the pre foreclosure and bank owned section. So here you can refine or add pre foreclosure details to your searches, such as the type of pre foreclosure, when it was recorded, the auction date, how much the bid is, and all of that good stuff. This is also an area where you can suppress pre foreclosure. So, Phoenix is known to be a very aggressive area for investing. And let's say a lot of these investors are always calling pre foreclosures. So, what I can do is I can say, you know what, if pre foreclosures are highly sought after, why don't I look for a lien instead of a pre foreclosure, but that lien and I can go into the pre foreclosure section is not in foreclosure yet. So I'm kind of beating out the investors in this wow. area that are looking for pre foreclosures by looking for something before a pre foreclosure. So a lien not in pre foreclosure or a bankruptcy that's not in pre foreclosure yet, or we can stack. Hey, I want a pre foreclosure. I want a bankruptcy with a notice of default or an auction. And in, in this case, we too many uh, stacking that we don't have any. What about a lien that is in an auction or a notice of default? And we have one of them. So you can see how our system allows you to not only add, but also suppress. So stay away from those foreclosures that all these other investors are doing. So liens that are off market, not in foreclosure. And then we have the ownership info. So years of ownership, the type of owner, when it last sold, last sell price, and then what I was referring to, the owner's location. So show me a lien that's non-owner occupied, it's off market, it's not in pre-foreclosure, and the owner lives in a different state. And so here are 24 highly motivated liens that are, again, not in pre-foreclosure yet but they're facing an abstract of judgment of $1,400, $8,000, $18,000. is a federal tax lien there. So just knowing where the owner is could be that much more of a motivational driver. You can also see if any of these have been transferred between family members. So you might see if there's you know property that's been owned for 20 years and there was a recent transfer. Uh, maybe there's some indication of something going on behind door closed doors that we don't know. It could be a medical issue. It could be something, or maybe they're just protecting their assets or being smart, but you never know. It's an indication that something is happening. So why not give it a call? You know, mm -hmm. then you have your lean bankruptcy divorce status. So here you can 
add a lien to your search of bankruptcy divorce or remove liens or look for liens that were released or bankruptcies that were dismissed. Here you can specify the type of lien. So we have 24 different lien options here. Show me all the tax liens or the HOA liens, which there are any mechanicals, not here, utility, nope, solar panel, child support or abstract of judgments. So, okay. Wow. So these are the things that you can look for. You can even suppress, again, maybe you've dealt with the bankruptcy before and you don't want to deal with it. So you can block bankruptcies, you can block divorces, and you can specify lien recording date, bankruptcy, lien amount, divorce recording date, and the year they didn't pay their taxes. And the last two sections are valuation equity, how much the property's worth, how much the property could rent for, the growth of the property over the last two years, the estimated equity based on a dollar amount or equity amount. You can also search for loan to value ratio. So the subject to's creative seller financing audience, show me a lien that has maybe 95% loan to value ratio. There's none. What about an 85% loan to value ratio? Something very high, nothing. So we'll do 20%. Let's do 60% or higher. See, so this is just allowing you to control the level, the loan to the value ratio. So again, the higher the loan to value ratio, the, the, the lower the equity is, and that may require some creative strategies. And then you can also search for assess total value, the tax value of the property. And then last, but certainly not least, mortgage information. So here you can search up to four loan positions. You can say, I want a property that has two loans on it or a property that has one loan on it. Wow. And look for an open mortgage with a certain amount or a loan of value percentage or dollar amount. You can even include exclude cash buyer records, free and clear properties, and seller carryback. So these are our 150 different filters for you to choose from for you to build a problem. And so far, what I've done is non-owner occupied with a tenant. It's off market. It's not in pre-foreclosure. It has a lien on it and the owner has one mortgage and they live out of state. So think about it this way. There's 15 properties in Phoenix that are being rented out right now. The owner lives in a different state and we're dealing with 33 plus million people that have filed for unemployment. Some of these renters here may not be paying the rent. So these 15 individuals may need some help. And that's the idea here is I didn't just look for a list. I look for a list with multiple problems on it. So that way I went from 8,500 liens to the 15 that are very, 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 very motivated and will probably really consider selling. And again, they're, because I've suppressed pre-foreclosures, these 15 have a high probability of going here because they do have a mortgage. And if those tenants aren't paying the mortgage and the owner doesn't pay the mortgage who lives in a different state, then these 15 properties may end up going into default. And that is, how the filtering system works. And now I can check off the results, the 15 that I have, and add it to an existing marketing list or create a new one. So Phoenix, Leans, hit save. And at this point, I can export the data. So now that I've built the list, I can go to my properties, find my Phoenix Leans, and I can export that data. Or I can skip trace it. So I can take those 15 liens and for 22 cents for each one that comes back with results, I can get phone numbers only, emails or both. So I can choose my lists. Look for my Phoenix list here. Make sure I highlight them. And then I can go ahead and hit done. 15 have been selected. I want e phone numbers only or emails only or both. And then I'll hit next. And for $3.60, I can place my order, accept the terms and agreements. And in about five, 10 minutes, after I skip trace, when I go into the contacts page, here at the lower left-hand side is my skip tracing results. So I can see like my Miami list that I skip traced a few days ago, or a Riverside list that I skip trace. And so not only do I have the tired landlords list or the Riverside liens with no pre-foreclosures, but I also got their phone numbers and emails as well. And so now I can check them off and hit export. So again, you can export just the data. You can export the data plus the contact information or just keep it all within PropStream 
And after you search and save and then skip trace and get your contact information, you can go to the campaign section and we can start a new campaign. You name the campaign, you choose the list of individuals you want to campaign to, and you can create as many campaigns as you like. You can see here I have 113. And the idea is that we know that no two marketing lists are the same. One's going to be for lean. So this lean campaign is only for the 50 individuals that have a lean. And so those 50 individuals will get a postcard, a ringless voicemail or email of my choosing. And I also get to create a landing page for them. So that way, you know, when I send the postcard or the voicemail and I say, hey, go to my website, relistingsite.com, Burton buys liens with cash. When they get to this website, this is an application that they can fill out. And so if any of these 50 individuals really need my help, they're gonna go to this website, they're gonna fill out their name, email, phone number, and message, and I'm gonna get an email notification. And that's a warm lead. If any of these 50 take their time to get to my website after getting my postcard, my voicemail, or my email, and fill out this information, and I get an email notification while I'm out shopping, everything goes on hold because that's a warm lead. They took the time to do that. And so that is how this three-part process works. You can search and save and export, search and save, get contact information, and then export or search get contact information, and then go into the campaign and directly market to them. Now, assuming that this is done correctly, you're gonna get a, a lead. Someone's gonna call you, hey, I'm interested in selling my house. And so what you're gonna do then is instead of searching a market, you're gonna search an address, right? Well, what's your address? Let me look into it for you. And as you search an address, we're no longer seeing results on the right-hand side. Rather, we're seeing the subject property we're seeing the 100 neighbors around it, the MLS properties around it, the pre foreclosures, the foreclosures. You can even zoom in on the map. The streets turn blue. You can click on it and see the property itself. But in reality, what we really want to do is go to the details of that property. Because remember, before you call the owner or maybe you're talking to the owner over the phone, you need to analyze that property. You need to know the opportunities. Hey, here's a 14 year old building. The roof doesn't need to get done yet. Oh, they've owned it for eight years. Maybe their kids are now in college and they need a downgrade from that four bedroom, right? Oh, the estimated value has climbed since last year. Oh, comps are pretty good. Oh, they have two mortgages, but the mortgage balance is still low. That's not bad. So we're giving you a lot of information to make an informed decision. But at the end of the day, all of that information is in sc scattered detail down below from the owner's name, mailing address, property characteristics, legal description. You get to see tax information, mortgage and transaction history, documents. But at the end of the day, you got to make an offer. How do you know what to make an offer on? You got to run comps. So if your whole strategy is we're going to give, you know, 50% in cash to the market value of that property, well, what is 50%? And in order to know 50%, you have to know the 100%. And so that's what the comparables are. And in our comparable section, I can use public records. So what the county has recorded or MLS records, what's recorded on the MLS, right? What agents are recording or both, you know, tap into both of these records and show me what has sold in the last year that has a four bedroom minimum, a two bathroom minimum, just like our subject property here. And I want all the MLS statuses that have sold and I want all the public records that have been financed by a bank. And the properties need to be a residential single family property. And we can increase or decrease the distance. So we can do a quarter mile, let's say 0.25 miles, make it really tight. And now here we have our seven properties. Here are seven properties within your filtering criteria. Here are their characteristics. Here are the photos. And you can see these photos. You can see which ones have been fully rehabbed, right? Make sure that they're actually good comparable comps. So just going through all these photos, make sure they're good. And all right. And so maybe we choose all of them. And if that's the case, we get to see all their amounts and it will average it out for you. But it's not that you need to know the average. It's that you need this data when you're negotiating. So what do I do after I make my comps? I'm going to hit actions. View comps report, 
And what it's going to do is going to take the comps that you've selected and generate a PDF file for you. And this file is going to show you all of this, the subject property and its details, the estimated value, your comps criteria. So it lets your buyers and your sellers know that you've done your job. Like, hey, you've really made sure you're pulling records that are very, very similar to the property. Based on those records, it's going to show you the low, the high, and the average values. And if they still don't believe you, it's going to show them where the comps are on the map and the records that you use, either public or MLS. We're going to remind them of the subject property, their property. And we're going to also show them the summaries of every property that's sold. So there's no questions asked. This is the property. This is what it looks like. That sold for 609. Number three, that's what it looks like for it to sell at 605. And we could continue downwards. They still don't believe you. We'll continue downwards and we're going to show them all the photos. You know that property that sold for 609? Here is why it sold for 609. That 605, here's what it looked like on the inside, right? That 620, here's what it looked like on the outside and inside. And this is what yours look like, right? And as you're staring around. So it gives you an arsenal to hopefully negotiate much more confidently and to set realities. Because some of these homeowners from the stories I've heard are going to ask for full price, even if the house is like caving in on itself, right? And so to have the tools that we provide, not just the details to make an informed decision, but to take the comparables with you to, you know, obviously set reality to the homeowner and let them know, hey, this is why I can't give you full price. But to then also inform your buyers that, hey, you know what, we, we have a contract, we think it's a great deal, here is why. We locked it in at 400,000 and comps are selling for about 600. Like that's a 200,000 margin right there, you know? So that's just some ideas I wanted to share with you guys, but that is what PropStream is capable of doing. It's a two part process to build a list of 10,000 per month if you start with our lowest package. But again, it's not just building a list and marketing to them, it's what happens when they call you back. You need to use a system that's gonna also give you as much information to make that best possible decision, period. Wow, great, great stuff. Um, you know, I'm just looking at some of the comments, you know, people are here just blown away <laughs> by the information that you can, um, you know, the things that you can do with this software, man. So it is, it's absolutely amazing. Um, one of the questions, and I know you answered this before, was uh, Mark, Mark uh, Caruso, I wanna make sure I say your last name right. He says, can you import a list into PropStream, get all the necessary property information, including estimated values, and then export that list with appended data, estimated values and property information into an Excel spreadsheet? Yes, that would be with our list automator feature. And I can show you exactly how to do that if you want me to screen my share my screen really quick. Yeah, please, please do. Okay, so let me just put do you back that. on. Okay. All right, so let me, okay. And so here is my, you can see my screen, right? Okay, so just to show you um, what I'm referring to. So here is a driving for dollars list. So I went driving for dollars. There's pretty much over like 200 and 200, like some 60, I think, addresses on this list. So just addresses, email or uh, city, state, and zip, right? So I took this list and I went into PropStream. And since I have List Automator, what I did was I imported that list. So you see, just a, a few weeks back, I imported my driving for dollars list. So when I imported that list, remember, this is what it looked like, right? And let's just isolate one address here randomly. So 4857 Fur Avenue. So I took these addresses and I imported into PropStream and I called it the driving for dollars list, which is right over here. And there they are. And so now when I search 4857 Fur Avenue, so I'm gonna go here to the address bar, 4857, there it is. So we went from a spreadsheet with no data to importing it. And now you have all this data, owner's name, tax information, transaction history, documents, you got that estimated value, the comps, you can even run comps on your own if you want. 
But now to answer your question, it not only imported my list and gave me the data, but remember, when it imported my list, it categorized. It said, hey, you had 257 imports. Did you know nine of them are on market? Did you know two of them just sold? Hey, 242 are vacant. Well, that's correct because I went driving for dollars. But 232 have high equity, 16 have low equity, nine have negative equity, 21 are bank owned, three have a lien, 178 have a free and clear. So not only are we giving you our data, but we're going to categorize it for you. And not only categorize it, but you can even say, you know what, those free and clear ones, that's interesting. I want to edit that. So those 170 free and clear, how many of those are owned by a person for more than 10 years? Apply. And it says, okay, um, in that case, 257, there's 55 of them because we gave you our data. And so now we're able to filter that. So I uploaded 257 addresses. I had no idea what was going on. PropStream gave me all the data. They isolated categories for me. And I took one of those categories for and clear. I said, okay, 10 years of ownership, individual. Oh, well, here are the 55 of your 257 that meet that criteria. Now I can check that off, hit that export button, and it's going to put it on my Excel sheet for me. So once I hit export, there is my Excel sheet. Oh, sorry. I'm opening it too fast. And there they are. Here are these 55 properties and their contact information. So to answer your question, yes, you can definitely append or import, append our information, and then export it if you'd like as well. Wow. Again, great, great stuff. Um, one, of, one of the other questions... Now, now that shows definitely how you can enter, how you can actually pull that data after it's all updated and everything. Um, I mean, that's absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. I, I can't wait to get to start, <laughs> start you know working with this thing now. Uh, we have someone else that says, and and I believe you did cover this question before. It says, uh, how does this relate to commercial listings? Does it pull some pull the same information? And what about bank contact information? So bank contact information is not available because they're the bank. Um, so there's no way to skip trace them. You can call their customer support line, no problem. Commercial listings. So we do have commercial records, but when it comes to listings, like if you were to say, I want a commercial building with a divorce, that's not going to happen because right. most of our listings are residential listings. Mm -hmm. That's our primary goal is to get residential uh, distress listings, right? But it's starting to grow. So you're going to start seeing over time, like, pre foreclosure commercial buildings. Like we were when we were doing the Phoenix area, uh, I was looking for pre foreclosures. I, I chose commercial, we saw 14. I chose vacant land, we saw 14. When I did residential, we did 85 of them, right? So uh, there are some pockets in the United States where we will have commercial buildings that are in a list type, like a pre foreclosure or a bankruptcy, um, but it's not gonna be, clearly across the board. Uh, but for residential properties, yeah, that, that, that's mainly our thing. So you're, most of our 14 quick list choices are going to be primarily for residential properties. You're going to find more results in the residential area. Uh, five plus units. Yeah, actually, if you, I see the question there, if you went to our property characteristics, you have the unit number range search. So you can say, I want an apartment building with, you know, five to 10 units or 10 to 20 units that's going through a tax lien or is non-owner occupied with an out-of-state owner. And so it's just a matter of just building the criteria at that point. But yeah, we do have, uh, that's considered residential in most counties. And so we do have those information. Great stuff, great stuff. You're getting some great questions here as well. Um, and I wanna, I wanna encourage anyone that's watching, you know, we got, we got a few more minutes. Uh, and, I, and you know, that's of course, if uh, Bird, you can stick around with us for, for a few more questions. If anyone else has questions, please feel free to go ahead and put those in. Um, but, you know, so far, this is absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, I've used it, um, but I have people on my team that use it for me, and they're much more advanced at, you know, doing the data pools than I am. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about going to try it myself even more now. <laughs> 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 um, because this, this, you know, what I'm looking at is this covers – just about all of the bases that those of us that are fixing and flipping, that are wholesalers, 
Uh, it covers all of the bases of what we're looking for. I mean, to, to be able to go out and do driving for dollars and pull a list of, you know, 50 or 100 and be able to upload that into this, if this, this software and to get all of the information as well as the amount of equity, as well as what's listed around it, and you know, and then pull comps right from the same platform is is absolutely phenomenal. You know, and the beauty of it is because many of my students are doing this all over the country, uh, they can actually pull comps from and do do the same type of data with someone that they're working with, you know, across the country. You know, so it's it's absolutely absolutely amazing to be able to have this available to us. You know, uh, I want to just see if we have anyone else that has any additional questions before we uh, before we log out. Um, anything else you want to share with us, uh, Burton, about some of the things that we should be, you know, paying most attention to when we're using it or um, just make I mean, sure you're, lot, you're oh, yeah, just just remember at the end of the day, build a problem. I, I think once we we understand the mindset that we're not looking for leads or lists, we're looking for problems. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to find a lot, um, whether, you know, again, uh, again, just understand that some problems are not so obvious, like a list, like a pre foreclosure that's obvious. You could just go find a pre foreclosure list, but like a person with two mortgages, an out-of-state owner uh, with the tenant and during this it, it, pandemic that we're going, those are problems. And when you right. understand that, you'll, you'll find a lot of leads. Another thing to look out for is that uh, by the end of the one, month, so in about two and a half weeks, uh, our mobile app is coming out. All right. <laughs> um, the question was asked about probates. Uh, and I know you mentioned before that that you can't necessarily pull the probate information. But, you know, for the for those that have a probate list, can you explain how, how that works again? Yeah. So if you we, we don't have probate listings, but if you have a probate list, um, you can do one of two things with it. So usually when you pull probate lists, most of the times they just give you the address of the property in probate and the trustee of the, the situation or what's unfolding in that property. So what you can do is one of two things. If you don't have List Automator, you can take the time and just search each address one at a time in our search bar. And it's gonna tell you all the information that we have on those properties. So you'll know just by searching an address that's on that probate list, if it's on market, if there's a lien, if there's a bankruptcy, if it's an out of state owned property, so we're going to give you what we've collected, which is the data. So we don't have the probate list, but we can give you the data to make that informed decision, as well as if you have list automator. So if you have list automator, it's, it's even easier because now you just take your probate list and import it. And within a few moments, we're going to give you all of that detail and categorize it for you. We're going to say, OK, you just imported 100 probate lists or leads. Here's how many are on market, just sold, bankrupt, high equity, low equity, negative equity. So no, we don't have probate leads, but I wouldn't dismiss the fact that we have other records that will help you qualify which ones of those you need to call and which ones you shouldn't need to call. Mm, okay, good stuff, good stuff. Um, and, and just to, there was another question asked, said awesome stuff, how much is the software? It's free. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, it's, <laughs> no. it's um. So there's only a monthly subscription. It's ninety seven dollars a month if you click on Glenn's link. So please don't sign up directly. Uh, Glenn put it in the chat box. So make sure you click on his link. It's a monthly subscription. There's no yearly contract. We don't do any of that stuff. So it's ninety seven dollars a month if you click on that link. But you do get a seven day trial. So try it out for seven days. Uh, search your market. Just kind of play with the filters. Make sure you get enough results that you feel confident. I remember it's a numbers game. That's why we give you 10,000. So search your market. Make sure you're confident that there's enough records in your area to, to get a good amount of leads. Um, also in the seven-day trial period, I also encourage you to play with the filters. Get familiar with that. Start building these problems. Search your area and think of all the problems that a homeowner would go through that would make them consider selling a property and build these problems. And that will help you determine whether this is enough leads or a good system for you. And then run a comp, run a comps on a few properties. You know, if you own a property, run comps on it, or maybe randomly pull a property in the neighborhood and run comps on it, make sure there's enough comp data there. I'm very confident we have a lot of data there. So you should have not only enough public record data there to run comps, but we also have access to the MLS records. So those are just the tips I would give you. Um, Make sure to click on that link, 97, 10,000 leads a month, monthly subscription, seven-day trial period. Wow. 
So I imagine, you know, for those of us that are doing this, I mean, you know, especially, you know, more specifically to the wholesalers um, that may watch this. If you are a wholesaler and the investment of $97 with the ability to get 10,000 leads, I'm sure out of 10,000 leads with as much data as you have at your fingertips, I'm sure that you could probably close one deal in your sleep. <laughs> Um, you know, and 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 the, the the great thing about it is it's nationwide. You know, the new norm now is virtual wholesaling. That's the new norm. And you know, you can close a deal anywhere in the country and have the have that one deal cover the investment, you know, for the rest of the year, you know, with using this program. So um I'm excited to be able to have access to it, to be able to, you know, do what we do with it. I mean, and we're we're actually getting deals from it, you know, like I said, I personally not have not gone in and done a whole lot with it, um, but I have some folks on my team that are doing some things with it that are getting us leads and getting us deals closed from using this definite this program. So, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So, um, and if there are no more questions, uh, let's see, did we have anybody else that came on? You know, if there are no more questions, you know, I want I don't want to hold Burton because I know he's got quite a bit more going on. Um, we got him up early on the West Coast <laughs> to join us today. <laughs> um, but listen, I know, you know, we got we got on last time. We had some issues, but I certainly want to thank you for coming on again and taking this time to share this information with us today. Uh, and I know, like I said, it's absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. You know, I know it's something that we can certainly use to continuously consistently close more deals uh, on a regular basis and i know let's see how someone asked how often is the data updated oh know. that's a loaded question uh, so uh, no but it's a great question i say it's a loaded question um because it's the hardest question to ever answer as a data aggregator because here's the thing we another misconception um that there's like one source of data to get data from, and that is not the case. So the data that you just saw on our platform comes from all parts of the United States. So mortgage data, tax data, deed data, property characteristic data, MLS data, vacant, divorce, like n none of this stuff comes from one entity, right? MLS comes from brokers, vacant comes from United States Postal Service, mortgage data comes from lenders, county records comes from county records, or property, care records, property characteristics comes from county records. So how often is a data update? It's a two-part question. So here's how it works. We, the company, are the middle, right? And we're a revolving door. So every single day, we push whatever is sent our way to you guys, right? Now, What's below that, that's our users. So we're in the middle, users are here, we're a revolving door. Anything that comes in gets shot out to you within 24 to 48 hours, but who's bringing the data in? And that's the counties, the MLS, that, and they're all different, right? So like the United States Postal Service data, vacant listing, it only comes once a month. So that's not something that's gonna get updated every day. That's only something that gets updated once a month because the Postal Service only releases it once a month. Public records, sales, county records, like liens and divorces and pre-foreclosure, they all come from the county. There's thousands of counties we're dealing with nationwide. Some counties, as I mentioned earlier, are electronic, so we can get stuff from them within every business day, every two business days, maybe once a week from them because they're electronic. Some counties are paperback, so we have to send someone over there to actually physically set, take copies send it back and then we upload it. And this is why I can't really answer your question on how often is the data updated because no two counties are the same. I can say that the vacant updates once a month because yeah, the Postal Service sends us a huge list across the board once a month, but for transfers, deeds, sales, mortgage, it's across the board. So I will leave you with this. It is based on the population. Mm -hmm. So counties are runoff property taxes, right? So if you're in an area where there's millions of properties, there's millions of dollars being collected in property taxes, and property taxes is what feeds the infrastructure. Cops, counties, education, all of that stuff. So in a very populated county, you're going to see better technology. You're going to see faster responses or faster frequency. So if you search our, our system for like LA, Miami, Dallas, all these major uh, cities, the data frequency is faster. 
But if you start going out to an area where there's not too many residents, maybe like 10, 20,000 properties, um, again, counties are run off property taxes. So that county is probably not electronic, probably on paperback. And so we're only sending someone out there. And I'm not saying we as property, but our data collectors are, are again, it's a, it's a business where they have to measure out the cost effectiveness. Is it, is it cost effective to send Glenn to a city that only has 5,000 people every single day? So I have to pay for Glenn's travel, Glenn's food, Glenn's salary for him to go to a city with 5,000 people and there's only two pre-foreclosure records that are happening every day. Right. What's gonna happen is the company will make a decision and I will say, you know what, it's not cost effective. We're gonna have Glenn wait 30, 45 days and mm -hmm. then we're gonna send him and get all those records and put it in all at once. Now, when that happens, yes, you may say, oh, well, you guys just updated, but this record has been there for a week and a half. Yeah, it's been there for a week and a half because we don't have direct contact. We had to go collect it and it took a week and a half for it to logically make sense. This is why List Automator was created, right? So let's say a pre-foreclosure was released two weeks ago and we still don't have it. Don't rule us out. Just get the address, type it in because we may not have the pre-foreclosure details, but we have the tax info, we have the mortgage info, we have the MLS info. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of consolidating it. So I'd like to say that PropStream will have everything one day, but that is never gonna be the case. That's right. just an unrealistic um, expectation. I, again, I hope one day we could say that, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it's, it's hard uh, because of just no two sources being electronic, right? So that's how it works. Our update as a company is every day, but that doesn't necessarily mean every county is sending updates every day. And if you get something before we do, just import it or search the address and look at the other details that we have, because you may be able to consolidate and make, uh, again, a better informed decision. Great stuff. Great stuff. And, and, and it absolutely makes sense. I mean, you, you, you nailed it. You, you, you know, gave a great explanation. And that's something that should be understood in what we do, because there's going to be different systems for different places in different parts of the country. So it's hard to say when one company, when one courthouse is going to update their information versus the other. Um, and then, of course, based on whether or not, like you said, it's electronic or it's paperback, you know, that's that's um, I mean, but you did a great, good, great job explaining it. But it, yeah. It, makes sense yeah. and there's yeah. also external variables like COVID-19 took a hit with oh. data data re recording um, yeah. counties were closed across the board or if they weren't closed they were on social distancing policies so instead of having 20 people in the county uh, office they had 15 or 10 so right. records were piling up so things will get delayed because of external variables but uh, I hope that gave you a kind of an understanding of how frequency works I, I i love to say yeah hey, we do every day but that, that's just never going to happen that's just not the truth we will give you any records that are given to us the day before but that doesn't mean every county is giving us records every day right 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 okay great stuff listen folks go over and check it out at poolcompswithconfidence.com poolcompswithconfidence.com i'll put the link in the comments um, go over and check it out and listen, share this show today, share this with all your friends, all your colleagues, uh, you know, and this information is def definitely going to be something that will help all of us. You know, we're collaborating and working together. You know, we can actually work together and do deals together, you know, based on the information we're able to, um, you know, able to, uh, you know, retrieve from the, from using PropStream. So again, Burton, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for sharing your awesome knowledge and wisdom. Uh, you know, and, and all the techie stuff that I thought I was, you know, familiar <laughs> with, I'm clueless today about. <laughs> but, uh, I'll be back. Um, before I got cut off, I was saying we do have a mobile app coming out this month. That's right. Yeah. Um, so look out for that. But I'll definitely be back because I'm sure we're going to need to cover that with your audience. So, uh, yeah, I, I won't be gone for too long. You guys will probably see me in the next few weeks regarding uh, the mobile app part. It's, it's, it's so, so interestingly easy to reach you. So... <laughs> 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 I'll definitely be reaching out again and you, you know, I'm sure I'll be getting the updates and information on when that happens and we'll have you come back on and share, share with us how to use that as well. Most definitely. Well, thank you guys. I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. If there's anything you guys need, make sure to follow us up on Facebook. Um, we do have a exclusive Facebook community. It's called PropStream user community. So find us there. Also our YouTube channel, like and follow for any new releases and new updates that are going to be announced. Great stuff. Great stuff. Listen, 
Folks, this has been the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show where we talk about real life real estate situations, where we bring you real life real estate solutions. Uh, again, thanks, uh, Burton, for being with us today. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next week.